Yo, what's up friends? Welcome back to my channel, Angel in Tech. Um, this is episode two, part two, where I answer Python coding questions, talk about my thought process and how I approach to solve the problem. Um, in episode one, or I mean in episode two, part one, we talked about checking if a string is a palindrome. Now this isn't just for valid words, this is for a sequence of a string, so it could be any string as I mentioned in part one that I put out before this one. So definitely subscribe so and keep, turn on the notifications so you can keep up to date with current content. Um, but today we're going to talk about calculating a factorial using recursion. This is a great interview question that is used a lot. Um, one, because there's different ways to solve it. It helps you understand recursion and um, it's not where it's necessarily hard, but it's also very good to be able to know how to optimize this question. So we're going to go over that and then some different ways that it's used in uh, the real world. But yeah, let's get started and have fun coding. Cool. So going off of the last video where I went over checking to see if a string is a palindrome, Today we're going to do how to calculate a factorial using recursion. So the idea of calculating a factorial of a number is the product of all the integers from that number to 1 multiplied. Um, so for example, the factorial of 5 or 5 explanation point is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives you 120. Uh, factorials are not defined for negative numbers and the factorial of 0 is 1. So a recursive function is a function that calls itself during its execution. It needs an exit condition or it will run indefinitely. So the problem description for this is given a positive integer x, return an integer that is a factorial of x. If a negative number or integer is provided, return negative 1. Implement the solution by using a recursive function. Cool. So let's begin. And like always, I like to use class just because, but you don't have to. So. We'll define class factorial, if I can type factorial, and then in this first one we're going to pass in an integer and we're going to add one to it to be able to include the full result of the number. So we're going to do self, or no, we're going to do def, and then our init function, and we're going to do self. integer and then we're gonna pass we're gonna define self dot num equal to integer plus one and then we're gonna do self dot base cases so what this base cases is gonna hold it's gonna be a list holding zero or one so this will check if the integer is at zero or at one and if it is it's gonna return one like it says in the problem description and the cool thing about using defining this already is that it uses memoization, which helps improve the um, optimization of the function. So we can just do this and put in the zero and one in the list. Cool. So now we can do the calculating the recursion function. So we could just call it calc recursion. And we can just say self because we can, we're just going to call it once we finish the class. And so our first, so first we're going to check our base case. If so, our first case is to check the base cases. If um, what was it? A self dot num in self dot base cases. We can just say return one. Else, we're going to do self dot num minus equal one so what this is going to suggest is that this is our condition where in recursion we need to have an exit condition so we're going to start off at the highest number and start decreasing it until we hit zero or one um when that happens it'll exit it won't run anymore and that's exactly what we want for this so we're going to be de decrementing every single time so self.num is equal to self.num minus one um, and then we're just going to return self dot num times self dot calc 
recur and so this is just calling the recursion the calling it the function again which is exactly what we want so we're going to do the previous number times the next number and we're going to continue that um, and that is it for that that's how the function is implemented and we're going to take a look at implementing these in a range between zero and one so it'll calculate the factorial for one all the way for zero all the way up to nine we can do 11 if we want instead so this will calculate all the way to 10 mm, where did i mess up calc on oh, my spelling right here cool so the factorial of zero is one like it says factorial of one is one and then factorial of two is two times one which is two factorial of three is three times two times one which gives us six factorial of four four times three times two times one and so on and so forth so that's literally it um that's exactly what we want when it comes to creating a factorial of an integer cool and then i want to talk about some examples of how it's used in real world so in math education you run into factorials and calculus such as taylor's theorem the binomial theorem or combinatorics which is the art of counting as we've seen we've got to figure out um, the different possibilities you also see factorials in algebra when you learn about permutations so permutations when you get this right here um, you also one you can also use it when you want to calculate estimate the probability of desired outcomes in a card game going back to counting you want to keep track and if you already know the hand you know stuff like that it's like oh what is the probability of this given what has already happened remember you gotta gotta keep in account variable change so you're gonna need a knowledge of working knowledge of factorials and then lastly if you have chores and you have five to do on your list you're going to do five times four times three times two times one for 120 possibilities but that's not the best way to go about doing chores as we know just got to do them right so there's other ways and i did provide a link in this um notebook so and i will also put it in the description below but yeah that's exactly how i thought about doing this uh function for calculating a factorial like i said it's not more of it's hard but it's understanding how to optimize the code and the function so you can get a good uh, runtime on it um but yeah that's it for this video i hope you guys liked the fastness and shortness of it and uh definitely take a look at episode two part one where i go over checking the string if checking if a string is a palindrome um You'll learn some other things on there too, using um, regex, which is really cool, regular expressions. But yeah, that's it for this video. Comment, like, subscribe. If you have any more questions, if you have any uh, Python coding questions that you want me to go over, uh, at me on Twitter, at I am Angel SH. Uh, this episode two notebook will be uh, in my GitHub, at I am Angel SH forward slash Angel in Tech, where you can find this and episode one as well. Um, take a look at episode one link will be in the description, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great day or night whenever you're watching uh, I'll see you guys in the next one